Yeah, they put their foot on our necks, but we let them, so what you expect? When the last time you picked up a book? When the last time you wrote your own check? Yeah, we all up on IG and Netflix, and the devil, he got you on chill. He's scrolling and trolling your life, you can't see he the strong, cause he got you still. It's your vision that he wanna steal, and your mission that he wanna kill. No condemning, I'm keeping it real. It's conviction I want you to feel. And I'm praying today that we wake up, and the mess that we made, we can make up. It's because of a skin that they hate us, don't know what it's gonna take to shake us. Listen, listen. And I'm not pacing, I'm just patient They thought that I was moving slow They didn't know I was waiting Yeah, it's my season, it's my reason I talk with God every day I'm not into people pleasing And forever I'm for God And I just want you to know without Him Life is hard So get your heart right Get your house in order Hi, I'm Charcy Curtis Some of you may know me as Sister Diva out of Felville, North Carolina this is the Unforgotten Movement Podcast, where we allow everyday people to tell their testimony. Today, I have some special guests with me today. I have Q and Sean from Barbara Kings. I'm going to allow them to introduce themselves. They have so much stuff going on, so I don't even know where to start. But they're good friends of mine, so I'm going to allow them to start. I'm going to start first. Q, Sean, Sean, Q. I am Dr. Sundiata Morris. You know, um, I appreciate you having me on the show. I appreciate you being yeah. here. Um, I'm Dr. I'm Dr. Lumumba Kuo, and I appreciate you having me in your show. And I appreciate having both of y'all on the show. Can you give them the information for us, your Instagram, Facebook, or how to get in contact with y'all before we get started? Um, it's several it's several Instagram pages. Um, we have uh, Barbara King's NC. Okay. I have Cut My City NC. Okay. And you have, you even said I got a cooking show. We got... What's the name? How do Which you, one do is, you? Is it all up under the same um, page? No, nah, just for for, so for, for the most part of it, just Barbara Kings. Barbara Kings. I had Barbara Kings on Instagram. So just put in Barbara Kings. At anywhere. Barbara Kings. B-A-R-B-R-K-I-N-G-S. Okay. At Barbara Kings. We appreciate yeah. that information. They and on Facebook, on. at Barbara, B-A-R-B-R space, K-I-N-G-S, Kings. Okay. okay. Place for Sunny too. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, I want to thank y'all again for both yeah. coming because I'm a very much busy man. Um, I first want to um, congratulate both of you because you've got the doctor. That's right. On yeah. Your name. So congratulations. That's a big step. Um, I, how long have y'all been in business partners together? How long have you been in business or business partners? How long y'all been in business partners? We've been business partners uh, almost 30 years. Okay. How long? How did it get started? How did it start? Well, the the journey started, you know, with, with the both of us, you know, um, you know, touching bases in Virginia. We had a journey there okay. before we reached here, and um, we was we was coming from two different walks of life, you know. Um, initially, when we left Virginia, I moved here, you know, because um, you know I was I was initially coming out of incarceration. Okay. For for a little bit, and uh, he was he was working here on um, at Honeywell, mm-hmm. and uh, we decided actually um, Sue Jays, mm-hmm. which is you know in this area here, she she gave me an opportunity to work you know in her barber shop, and I brought him in as a as a partner of mine who who I knew from another state, and um, you know we worked for we worked there with her for for several years, but okay. she opened our minds up you know to have our own. And um, from that point, we went to the lineup, and then we went to having our own yeah. Barber Kings. Yeah, Sujay, uh, Sujay, Miss Sujay, she uh, she opened the door, but she also opened the door for community service. Okay, and she was really founding us uh, to go do haircuts for like the the rest homes and stuff like that. So the first time when we saw that, we didn't really understand why was we going on a weekend on a mm-hmm. busy day. She wanted us to go help out some of the um, homeless or do the um, haircuts for the elderly mm-hmm. until we actually got there and see what was going on. It, mm-hmm. it became a joy. You know what I'm saying? To say, like, God is not going to put you in a place mm-hmm. where you're not supposed to be. Looking right. back at it now, it was it was divine for us to really take that path, that walk of life. Okay. I know you said you was incarcerated, so I like, like to ask the question, did it make you or break you? Um, it made me. Okay. You know, um, because... Um, I was one of them, them type that was always moving in a certain way and wasn't never expecting to get caught doing what I was doing. And, um, you know, it caught up with me. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was I was actually grateful for the for the moment because um, it, it had me tap into being who I needed to be 
at the time, you know. And um, the one thing I remember about being there was um, I drew a, I drew a picture of myself sitting in a cell mm -hmm. with a ball and chain on my leg and a Bible in my hand. Mm. And um, I ended up reading the whole Bible when I was there, and mm -hmm. I'm not going to sit and tell you that, that I understood everything in it, mm -hmm. but it was something that connected me to me. Mm. And um, that journey started there in the early 2000s, and um, it got me to where I am now. Okay. You know, it's, it's, it's a beautiful journey. Okay, so for that person out there that may be like, they, don't have, they can't find their way after being incarcerated, what would you tell them? Um, you gotta you gotta sit in solitude. It's important. You know, you gotta spend some time with yourself. We're always giving ourselves to everybody around us mm -hmm. for what they want, but the most necessary thing is to give yourself to yourself. Mm -hmm. I think that's a big deal for for anything that anybody have going on because you will never know who you are when you're spreading yourself thin. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And, and, yeah, and, and like he said, like also to add to what uh, Dr. Sunday after just said mm -hmm. is that. Um, uh, incarceration, we, we observed some over the years. Mm -hmm. uh, we lost, uh, we had a, vic, uh, a barber that we lost over the years, which was AKA Blacks, mm -hmm. uh, Antonio Daniels. Right. He was incarcerated over 15, 16 years. Mm -hmm. And um, in that uh, situation, Dr. Sundiata was pretty much his counselor, was counseling one another and for life coaching. Mm -hmm. And um, couldn't tap into some resources that he had with him to really like get to the ground of it to give him his breakthrough. But the key that what we saw after the fact that he passed away and uh, sorry, you know, the loss in his debt, mm -hmm. uh, we saw that a lot of people coming out of prison had not did not get into counseling that should, they could continuously get in on a monthly basis by seeing a therapist. Right. They don't add a therapist to the fact that they go to a halfway house. Mm -hmm. If they have a therapist that they deal with, then they'll be able to have an outsource to go really vent their problems and some of the things too because they don't want to talk to somebody they know about some of the dark deep secrets. Mm -hmm. And that's something that got to be told so you can breed. Mm. You understand? So that's what one of the biggest things we saw. If I was to tell somebody that's incarcerated, that I think that the incarceration, find your therapist. Mm -hmm. I take it your whole life. Okay, okay. What do you think was your most successful community event and why? Cut my city, baby. Cut Come on now. <laughs> Cut my city was the number one. Mm -hmm. And okay. it's the number one. Okay. It's okay. the most successful and it was the biggest and the most successful event ever because... Dr. Sunday and myself, uh, we started, uh, like I said, started from the mustard seed from the uh, Misujes. Mm -hmm. And uh, from there, we kept going and propelling mm -hmm. to uh, to doing haircuts uh, with all the radio stations when they had the events in the mm -hmm. summertime. Mm -hmm. And uh, we we realized like how much the community really needed us. And mm -hmm. we were pretty much, we bought a different style of haircut into mm -hmm. Fayetteville, right. coming from Virginia. Mm -hmm. uh, no one here really used the razor mm -hmm. at all, period. Right. So coming here and bringing and using the razor technique, everyone wanted it back then. It mm -hmm. wasn't no enhancement back then. Right. But now everybody wanted that razor cut. I wanted that razor line. Right. And we had that. So parents trusted it. They mm -hmm. trusted the fact that we were we were honest men mm -hmm. that actually came in and wasn't trying to earn money, was trying to really earn a service. Mm -hmm. one, of, one of the biggest things for me was um, working with Darvin Jones. He, he gave us vision. Mm -hmm. For Cut My City, mm -hmm. uh, along with Sue J's. You moved your festival. Uh, Darwin Jones was was what uh, Fairville community represented when it came to everything that I seen. And for us to all collaborate and build on um, certain things that he had already structured, you know, uh, it gave it gave birth to Cut My City, totally. Truth. Okay. Should be yeah. told. I want to correct like, both y'all for that because that is something that y'all got going on. Yeah. Um, how was it like for you growing up as a child? Um, it was it was difficult early because um, I grew up, you know, um, the oldest of of three by my mother. She had me at fifteen, mm -hmm. so um, you know, being raised, I was raised by wolves, mm -hmm. but I was also um, given um, vision through my grandmother who lost her sight as she got older. Mm. So she was, she was, she was blind, you know, mm. but um, she, she, she taught me some things about, about life that I use to this day, you know, mm. when it comes to, you know, not being able to see everything, but actually visualizing something that I wanted and being able to pray about it mm. and move forward, 
you know, on every step and believed that I'm going to have it. Never taken a negative sight on whatever I had going on. I knew it was going to work from the time that I saw it. Mm. And um, my childhood, you know, um, you know, everybody has uh, the project life, which mm. is where I come from. Mm -hmm. But um, that gave me the solid foundation of who I am and where I am today. And um, I always, I always give thanks for that. You know, um, it's crazy. It, you know, we we could talk about the struggles, but I appreciate my struggles. Right. I appreciate my incarceration. Mm -hmm. I appreciate you know some of the the things that I've dealt with when it comes to certain things about uh, people and relationships. And I'm just grateful, you know, that I was able to go through it and still stand here mm -hmm. to this day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And to add, on, to add what Dr. Sunday had just said is um, is the fact that. Um, I grew up. I grew up in poor neighborhood too, back in the Caribbean Islands in Trinidad, mm -hmm. and uh, it was it wasn't tough in my mind mm -hmm. back then because no, if you never see nothing that if you never see another project or another place that's better than what you live in, mm -hmm. it your place become kingdom, you know. Mm -hmm. So the biggest thing was at that time was my mom always was the person who always make sure it was always magic was created, so she never you never see a chance to see the struggle. You know, um, my dad left my mom at a time when we were younger, and and when he left, it was it was that void that was missing there that I never seen got missing. It was gone for real. Mm. You know, and did it took a toll on me when I was in school? Um, not really, because I was focused on 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 school to be a very good scholar, and I want I know how important it was to be educated. At the same time, it was. Living in the projects and how pr protection has to be there. Like who protected me? There was there was a community leader that was in my in my in my neighborhood mm. that took care of us for basketball. He pulled us up and and mowed us, you know. Mm. And um, with that said, uh, moving from there and coming transition to the United States, mm. that's a big step for any person coming from a total country. And uh, that was that was my most bravest moment. Mm. That happened where. I, I came out of an element I was in to be in a new element and was willing willing to take a risk in my life because I know no one. And they speak slower or different and mm -hmm. the roads are different. Everything is different. It's big, it's huge. Mm -hmm. But my mom, she prayed for us to make sure that we always was guided and was always protected while we were there, while we were here. Mm -hmm. So do I, like he's like Dr. Sunday Arta said, do I regret any of my childhood? No. Mm -hmm. I love every bit of it, even some some of the dark moments. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because who I am today mm -hmm. is if I never experienced that, I would have never had a reason to be better right. or sharp my iron for who I am now. Right. Hey, the the way I see it is um in order for us all to develop, we gotta start in darkness. That's the right. only way you're gonna get a good picture. Right. It starts there. You know, if you understand the scientific methods of photo photographing. Mm -hmm. Darkness is first, so it's, it's necessary. So what would you tell that young boy or, or man that feel like, you know, they need a man to follow behind or look on some type of guidance? Um, it's like like speaking to my younger self. Okay. So what I, what I would say is um, the, the journey the is journey going to start in darkness, but you have to develop patience. Mm -hmm. and, you, and, and along that journey, you will, you will learn based off of some of the mistakes that we make, there's a, a certain act of discipline that we're gonna need mm. to, to, to be a part of whatever that journey needs you to continue. So mm -hmm. patience, is, patience is the main thing for me. Mm -hmm. Because uh, you, can't, you, can't become, you can't become 21 without dealing with the 21 years. Yeah, mm -hmm. right, <laughs> right, right, right. right. And, 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 and to add what Dr. Sunday Arthur just said too as well is, um, is that if I was to tell a young man, mm -hmm. you know, what he what he should do, I would tell him that what do you really love doing? Mm -hmm. If you really love whatever you love doing, just do what you love doing. Don't do what the next person's doing. Right. Do what you feel like you love doing. Right. And it doesn't matter what environment you're into. Mm -hmm. Because what you love doing can be done in every environment. Right. So that is just the, the, the biggest mecca of it to make it really be big when you get to an environment that you desire. Mm. You know, so 
take every grain of salt as it is to just sit in there and really like work it out. I started cutting hair with one pair of clipper mm. and I twist it to the side and make it, that was my fading clipper. It was the oyster, the old school oyster. The, the mm. funny thing about that is our, our people become very critical about doing things the right way when you're just starting off. I mean, there's, there's, there's really no correct way of doing things right. until you actually sit down and learn the actual format of how to do it. That's true. Because and because those things those those ways would take you out of your your foundational moment. It'll but, take you from that. Like like you using a blade sideways. Right. You ain't had nothing else. I had nothing else. Right. Right. So yeah, I had right. nothing else. You had to make it work. So I had to make it work. Right. right. Yeah, yeah, I had to make it yeah. work. Exactly. I had to yeah. make it work. So yeah. every as you get in an mm-hmm. environment, you might get somebody to give you a guard with mm-hmm. clippers and, and a better clippers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it should never but stop. But you determined to. Yeah, you had to be yeah. determined to stay on track yeah. Yeah. of what you really love doing because yeah. too many times I saw where people gave up and they forgot about it and they had to come back to it. Mm-hmm. The better you, mm-hmm. the better us for the future is right. the one who actually really stay on course. Mm-hmm. Because you're not wasting time. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You, you're putting in the work early mm. to live the greater years of your life till you leave the face of the earth. Okay. Okay. What, how important is relationships to you? Relationships is everything. Um, you know, when you're younger, you don't really understand it. You know, you get a lot of coddling, you know, from your, your loved ones or whatever. And it could be a little overcrowding. It's a, it's a, um, it's a, it's a lot. It's like having an umbrella over you at all times when it ain't even raining. Mm-hmm. Or either is it sunshine and you still had an umbrella there. But as I got older to understand relationships, I realized that being a better communicator with everybody that I came in contact with is what made my relationship the best one. I got a chance to know who I was around, who I was dealing with, who I cared for, mm-hmm. who I loved, how I love, how they love, mm-hmm. and why they love me. So that was that was the most important part of understanding the relationship. And I think it uh, it carried me across the bridge, you know, to this day because everybody that I kind of like grew up with, I still have a relationship to this day. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't I don't carry bad energy with nobody, mm-hmm. um, even guys that I grew up with, and we fought every day. I still love them. I see them, and mm-hmm. I hug them like, you know, I miss you, man. You remember the fights we had? Oh, it was yeah. good times. You know what I'm saying? We still alive. Yeah. They don't we do had, it now. We had to be grateful. Well, that's the that's the new generation. Yeah, that's the same. Yeah, well, you got to you got to yeah. bring that back because yeah, really. you got to bring that back because, like every person, I believe have I believe that every person has a circle of friends. Mm-hmm. And in your circle, you will keep running to these people no matter where you go on the face of the earth. Right. Because your polarities and your energy just attracts them all the time. And if you don't take time to really understand the relationship, like you said, right, yeah. then you, you, you're you one track in your mind to choose mm-hmm. what you think the relationship is. Mm-hmm. But you never let the relationship be. Mm-hmm. So my thing now is like, no, fast forward me now, the new me, mm-hmm. is like I really went back and had to patch some of the relationships that I didn't really take care of in a very nice and polite way and also creating boundaries. Mm-hmm. Because we think when we got a relationship, we got to give relationship all the way through so a person has all the way through to you. Mm-hmm. And that sometimes be our mistakes that we make for ourselves. And then we get disappointments when we don't see the results of what you expected of, a, of an individual to have for you. Mm-hmm. So as we go forward and you see this relationship, the relationship with this individual, the individuals and you start separating them, it's just like you're like a board. You have to separate it, but don't tell them. Mm. You just got to know where, to, how far to go with that person right. or another to really be in a situation to really progress as one. So mm. that I said, relationships is mandatory. When it, when it comes to certain relationships, most people look at that relationships as winning or losing. A person will look at you and say, hey, uh, better me than you. But that that is not the necessary outlook. I think that because it's a bit of the westernized, the westernized uh, a way how they just categorize just relationships to just be in a relationship like family. Mm-hmm. It, it could be. You know? It could, it could very much be that. But when you're looking at certain situations about how people deal with each other, a person won't talk to you for 20 years based on something very simple. Yeah. That they can possibly fix. They could, just, they could just go right next door and have a conversation. And then 20 years later, it's the same conversation. Yeah, that's why I say communication is everything. Yeah. I yeah. think it's egos, man. Yeah. 
yeah, well, a lot of that going the on. The egos, egos have a lot because if you learn to figure yourself out and then you let that ego go, it's easy for you to really go, re, really like have that really conversation with that person or having a lot of ang- a lot of animosity within yourself to expel on the individual, on the person. Yes, yeah, you know, bigger, because I've been person. through a situation I saw where I was the fourth and it was never the person. It was never no one the problem. Mm. It's always you. But what you think is what you think uh, it come from where a person say you don't know me when they upset. Yeah, bec- the reason why they say when they don't know you yeah. when, when they're upset is because you really didn't really take on you really didn't listen to that person to really know exactly what they were doing to not be upset. Right. So you ignored it and you still come up with your own your own way of thinking that I'm going to ignore them for these few sentences, but you never really pay attention. So when they say you don't know me, they're really saying that and it's the truth yeah, that's because true. you punch their trigger. So outside of ego, there's an assumption of what a person may feel and how you dealt with it and what trigger you may have pushed. To, to really ignite the feeling that they had to become the person that they are to tell you that they don't know you. That's true. That's true. That's but I feel true. like when they say they, they let you know it's a side of them, they try to depress. Right. And they yeah. let you know, like, you really don't know me. Right. Like, I'm doing the best yeah. I can. Like, there's, a, there's, yeah. a, there's a beast inside yeah, right. me. Like, yeah, right. I'm depressed. Yeah. I don't want yeah. yeah. to reveal and, this and, on and, you. And, 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 but do you, do you let that line go by or do you ask them, well, then tell me. Well, that's you a, well you, I mean, it take a bigger person to do it. Everybody don't well, do well, that. Well, well, this is why this we, the this is why we, the, we uh, Dr. Sundiata and Dr. Lamumba Kwa is here on the cast because mm-hmm. we have sit back and seen and understand it now to a point where mm-hmm. to not check a person but politely mm-hmm. ask the question when they bring that to you. Say, mm-hmm. well, then tell me who, who are you? you are you. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm I'm there now. Like I really tell people all the time. First, get to know the person before you sit there and try to judge them because you never know what a person been through. We should never judge. I well, believe we, because that's not our do. place. We all do. One, one of the biggest things about uh, where I am now is um, I'm not I'm not as angry as I thought I was when it came to things that I've been through. Right. So I don't I don't have to deal with it in a way where everything is about anger and everything is about me standing up to you to reveal my ego, to tell you that you don't know who I am. I'm just understanding enough to know that we haven't traveled the same course for for you to suppress your anger like I suppress mine based on things that I dealt with in my childhood and you left it to be angry about. So so what happens (laughs) when, you know, of course it's it's a conversation, but what happens when the person really truthfully how do you bring that across politely to a person that doesn't really have, they don't take offense to it? You, you know what I mean? Of, of, you know, like putting yourself here and I'm here. How do you? You, you don't. How do you? Because it's, 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 not, it's not in your control. Okay. At the end of the day, you got to allow the, pe- the people to be who they are and where they are at that time. Okay. And, and when they go past that point, they maybe come back to you and say, man, I was a little out of line that day. I couldn't. I couldn't bring myself back. But mm. it's been two years. I understand where where you were. Like mm. we, when we evolve, we don't we don't claim our evolution. That's true. Mm. We 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 change our clothes. We look different. We age. We get older. But the mindset is still there from five years ago. Mm. And we hold so, on to that. So they update their 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 like they update their iPhone. They update everything else that's around them. The self. They their physical health. But they never really upset. They never never really updated their mind. Never. Right. Oh it, wow. It get updated, but not not like really like Priority. fast fast booted. It's not gonna be like something that goes zip zip. And like you said, it's always a button. That somebody they're gonna, take, gonna yeah. take their time with that because we want to detail everything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Have you ever been in a dark place? And how? If so, how did you pull yourself out of it? Uh, I've been in a dark place. I've been in a dark place. I was ex-military. I was in the Navy, United States Navy. Mm-hmm. And um, after getting out of the Navy, I worked for the government as an engineer. Mm-hmm. And um, within those those 15 to 20 years, I never took a break. Mm-hmm. And I got married. You know, I had, I had marriage. I had my child. And within that time, I was, I really was at my bottom bottom because I walked away from the job after making like almost $200,000, $250,000 a year. Mm-hmm. I left the job to take this soul journey of just being a barber, working in a barber shop. You know, so when I got to that point, uh, my business partner at that time, that's to tell you how a partnership is so important. He 
he was like the backbone of confidence that I had around me to like, man, you could do this, man. You could do it. I know you can do it. You know, of course, a lot of people don't ever see that side. They see just the picture, mm -hmm. you know. But at some point in time, I had to really like sit down because I was being checked in so many different ways with my personal health. And uh, mental health was one of them that I really truthfully didn't master or mastering. I didn't know about or was aware of. And mm -hmm. Dr. Sandiata at that time, he checked me into the psych ward. I went in the psych ward and sit for almost two months. Mm -hmm. Two months in solitude of really discovering who I was. I had a chance to rest. I had a chance to sleep. I had a chance to someone really truthfully diagnose, check my whole body, see how I sleep at night. So I can really be a better me for other people. Mm -hmm. And um, coming out of that, that dark place, I was really, I saw light, but I couldn't reach light. I saw the grass, I want to touch it, but I couldn't reach it. Mm -hmm. And uh, and the first thing I said when I get out of here, I'm, I'm going to go spend a lot of time with nature. <laughs> you know, and um, when he came and checked me out with the psych ward, um, uh, I hugged him first. Mm -hmm. I said, thank you. And uh, I took a moment and went and, went and touched nature. Had a chance to really like, Touch the grass and appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Appreciate the trees, appreciate the animals. Mm -hmm. Appreciate things that people overlook all the time. Right. So the tears I may shed is, is not a, it's tears of joy, of, of having someone that cared for me, Enough. took me in a place mm -hmm. where I literally, he knew the answers of what I needed to be better as a person. And not constantly aiding the diagnosed, mm -hmm. but curing the diagnosed by putting me in the hands of someone of better help. Becoming a part of the solution. You know? Mm -hmm. So like, part of part of my darkness, um, it wasn't never really just one thing. My darkness and I think it was short lived, you know, watching my childhood, I spent most of the time seeing my mother, you know, uh, being abused, um, being in the streets, you know, seeing seeing people being robbed, murdered, mm -hmm. um, being sexually abused, mm -hmm. not understanding, um, not having money. Mm -hmm. You know, those were things that I had dark times about, but when um, I got to a place to overcome it, realizing that None of those things really uh, were uh, things that really made me wealthy, like far as like how it pulled me out of it is, you know, I, I use those things as fuel to like, to be where I am today. You know, it's a lot of things that I can, um, I could overlook to know that, you know, it's, it's sun on the other side. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm very like, um, uh, Uplifted, you know, no matter how dark it could be, mm -hmm. the the sun is there, and that's not like a play on, on anything. I'm just that type of person. It's like you know, people are like, oh, you you don't seem like you have bad days. Well, I do, but it, it may not be how you deal with it. I and, get it, and you, and you can't show that to everybody. Can't so, can't reveal it. So the problem with what I've seen over the years is that people reveal their darkness to everybody. Mm -hmm. And it become toxic. Mm -hmm. So, me sharing this story with the world is something I have to share because everyone deals with it at some point in time, you know. But uh, that's something it becomes personal, personal first before it can be voted to anybody else. You got to see proven results first before you open your mouth to tell everybody else this is what I'm going through because you never, which means you never really get over it. Mm -hmm. You're talking yourself out of it, but did you really went forward? Mm -hmm. You know so. You know you have the you have people be around you, people be around you, and they will come and complain about something all the time about their past, and hoping that you don't don't hurt me, don't hurt me, don't hurt me. Mm. What am I hurting? If you never fix your hurt, how can I be a part? Why you want you telling me you don't hurt you? I'm not here to hurt you. Have you fixed your hurt? Mm. Because you pulling me to hurt you. Mm. You know, so that's something that has that self has to adjust for ourselves to really check 
these trigger words and these words we keep using on other people and expect for someone to really pick up the slack of your downfall because mm -hmm. it's not mine. Okay. I think um, I think people um, overuse words like hurt and pain. Mm -hmm. It's two different things. Um, I, I don't think um, I don't think pain is forever. Mm -hmm. I think hurt is something that people hold on to that that can bother them from in a convenient way. So what keeps you grounded? What keeps me grounded? Mm -hmm. To know that um, I'm still in a place to overcome it. You know, if I can move and do everything that I'm doing on a daily basis, then my strength, my, my personal strength within, you know, the things that, I, that I've taught, I mean, that I've learned from my grandmother I mean, she she lost her vision for Christ's sakes. She got everything she she wanted, mm -hmm. and she couldn't move. She couldn't walk. You know, she's sitting in one spot on a daily basis, and I seen her still get everything she wanted because she she learned how to invest in people. She learned to invest in the church, and when I seen some of those things, not realizing why she had me on this front row with this itchy suit on every <laughs> Sunday. Mm -hmm. I realized that that was my DNA. And it's, it's crazy how to be grounded like that because my grounded came from me really understanding. Like I said, after learning me, I realized I'm a nature person. Mm -hmm. Nature is the place I go to find peace when I'm by myself, when it gets overwhelmed sometimes. Because you're going to have overwhelming moments as you go further in life. And, uh, and I share that with my business partner. And uh, brother, you know, and um, we, it, 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 you could see the difference, a shift when a person's really come out from that place, because the human body is really truthfully a conductor, conductor that sits between the heavens and earth. You know, the ground is the the sun is the solar that give you the sunlight, and the the earth is the magnetic field that holds us the ground. If you never align yourself with the heavens and earth. You can literally walk out of that house so unbalanced that you could run into so many problems because you're rushing to do everything. Get up in the morning, you try to get in your car, go start, just back out and pull out, you hit something. Mm -hmm. Because you really have your concentration is all over the place. So you got to settle around. You got to find a way for yourself. And sometimes it takes practice because we were never told as a people how to really, really concentrate and really meditate and really pray and really sit in a situation to really center ourselves. Mm -hmm. So... We were always told to pull, come here, come here, boy, you do this here. Come here, girl, you do that here. Mm -hmm. And that mentality had went on with us for so long mm -hmm. to the point where when do you find yourself to really give yourself that break for a moment? If God built the heavens and earth in six days and rest for one, why are you not taking a break? Mm -hmm. Why are we working seven days a week and you're not taking a break? Mm -hmm. It's very important that you take a break and get your rest and get your mental health and get your family and enjoy that part. And then I do away from work. Mm -hmm. So grounded, I think, to me in this time now with our generation that's coming ahead and our generation who, like, we live now is to practice it mm -hmm. and find a way to practice for yourself. Mm -hmm. Don't so, quote me on this, but, um, you know, I'm, I'm like, uh, sometimes I want to feel like I'm a poet. But from sometimes I, I feel like the cross mm -hmm. was created based on the sun centering itself in a certain way where a lot of people think the sun sits in the middle, mm -hmm. but it, it never really sits in the middle. It's, it's, it's the nucleus of where you are. And a lot of people feel like it could be right here. Mm -hmm. It's not. It centers itself in between whatever the energy is. Don't quote me on that. I just feel like that's what happens. And that's how the cross was made because it comes up comes down and then it moves in a certain so a lot of people if they don't if they don't go outside and get sunlight you go in a depressed mode mm -hmm. you have you be have very depressed to sit in a house all day long and work on a computer or do work from home go outside and get some fresh air touch the grass get some sunlight so you can balance yourself because you're just going to keep getting depressed and depressed and depressed because you're lacking one thing yeah you're grounded on this part on the feet on the ground but you that other part need to charge who's charging your batteries mm -hmm. Where are you getting your batteries charged? Mm -hmm. So what was that time you realized God was real? What was it like 
the first time? Um, when I realized God was real. I mean, he pulled me out of everything. I'm a, I'm a true believer of, you know, the reason why I'm here to this day is because uh, no matter what I've been through, you know, I, I survived it all, you know, and I know that, you know, the, the spirit lives with, within, you know, and uh, right. I embrace that, you know, on a daily basis. So we wouldn't be alive if he wasn't real, right. I wouldn't be here if he wasn't within me. Right. So uh, that gives me the energy to know that he's real. Mm. And some of the things that I'm doing to continue uh, my my praise and, and the way I feel about the most high is to continuously serve every day. You know, what I do for, for a living it's not always about money because a lot of times we're giving it away. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, uh, and my end is, um, you know, um, what was that God first? always, God always been in my life. Okay. He's been there since I was a child. I was baptized Baptist. Mm -hmm. And my mom, she was a spiritual, she was a high priest in a spiritual Baptist religion. Mm -hmm. I were, we were go to church every Sunday, but at the same time, I didn't like church because it's someone taking your church with no understanding. All right reading scriptures that I really didn't know nothing about. Mm. And I didn't know, but I know there was a reason why we were going there. As I got older, you know, the person, people tend to neglect the thing they most do when they were younger because mm. it was been abused by it. Mm. So, it, but it would draw you back to it because it's it's you. Right. Uh, when when the opportunity came for me, I, like I literally, um, within the last three years, I knew he were there mm -hmm. by one leg and one leg out. Mm -hmm. You know, I woke up and I just dropped to my knees one day, mm -hmm. and uh, and I prayed to him and I and I and I had a conversation mm -hmm. and the conversation was personal, but um, I shared with Doctor Sundiata and um, from there I realized like every time I served him, he gave me what I wanted. Mm -hmm. So why should I stop serving him? Right to get what I need. And what I need and what I need, it it was it was simple, but it, he served it and I was very being very open minded to know that I wasn't choosing where it was coming from neither too. The the tricky thing about what you just said, um is we get what we want from both God and the evil. Yes, because it's with it's within it's a choice. And then, mm -hmm. you know, um the, the one thing that I live by to understand to this day, being the age that I am now, is we grow up looking like our parents and we die looking like our choices. Yeah. Right. And um, I realize, you know, yeah, God going to give me what I want. The devil going to give me what I want. At right. the same time. Yeah. But, Equally. But, but how do I want to be remembered? Yeah. Make a choice. <laughs> Make a choice. Yeah. yeah. A, so it's a choice. The choice is real. The choice become real. And, and when that choice become that real, it's a point where I was having a conversation with one of my clients the other day. I said, when you go spiritual, you you could cheat yourself if you want to. But when you get to that point, it's like, why would I want to go back at right. this age right now exactly. to really out? This is like a really, this man is opening Pandora's box for me yeah. right now. And mm -hmm. I'm really enjoying this new journey. Mm -hmm. So do That's it's a piece of mind. Yeah, it's a piece of mind. And, like, you know, we I always thought I had to go to a church when we in barbershop. Barbershop is a cornerstone of a community, and it's a church. It's a it's universal a church. hospital. The yeah. church is within. Yeah, you know, it's within. You know, mm -hmm. and uh, as we as we grow forward to really understand that for what my belief is, mm -hmm. without any religion uh, tag on it, right. I just believe that there is a higher power, mm -hmm. period. Okay, okay. And what does I forgot mean to you on a personal level? I'm for God. It means... You know, um, continuously serve, serve, serve. You know, that's all I know. You know, um, based on my upbringing, you know, that's all I remember, you know, is, you know, me doing things for people um, and, and giving them the energy that they needed, you know, no matter what it was, even if it was me hurting, it didn't matter, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's a, that's, I felt like that's just the most godly thing, you know, because the only image that I had was seeing the picture of 
what's supposed to be mm-hmm. Jesus and then seeing the picture and the image of Jesus on the cross and then seeing stories about it and them thinking like, well, sacrifices and things that that give me strength and and I can still do it on a daily basis. Okay. That's God for me. That's I'm for God, you know. What does that for I mean you on a personal level? I'm for God on a personal level for me is he's the only one that has access to my whole entire life. Okay. He is the only one that before I talk to anyone, I have to ask him first permission to be in a situation to get the right words out of my mouth to make sure I know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Yeah, to be mindful of that is just to be mindful that put him first before me. Mm-hmm. Because if I'm in the image and likeness of him, there's only permission for me to ask him first as a parent mm-hmm. to, with respect, to, to have permission to do what I want to do. You that's know, that's my that's my version of I'm for God for me. Okay. You know, totally like when you actually make that connection, you will have a connection with everything on earth, like as to how he really moves. Like mm-hmm. oh, yeah. I, I see it in animals, mm-hmm. I see it in insects, and it I become to a point where I don't wanna okay. I okay. don't wanna harm nothing. No nope. mm-hmm. because there's a message in everything that has been created. Right. I had his gift for y'all today. I don't forget. Here is yours. Well, thank you. There's nothing like the presence. Here, right. <laughs> <laughs> and if y'all had to play the rest of the people with something positive today, what would you tell the people? Before we got there, I got a question for you. Okay. <laughs> why Why are you for God? Why would I not be? I mean, he's the creator. I mean, he gives me... I can go on and on. I love every bit about what God is and what it's about. He's the reason why I'm living. Um, yeah. I would choose nothing but to be for God. Can you leave the people with something positive to say? Um, the positivity I would leave with the people, man, mm-hmm. is to um, keep your head up. And number two is to condition your mind, mm-hmm. your body, and your soul. Have respect for yourself right. before you feel like you want to earn respect from others. 